Welcome to episode 3 of Inspect. My name is AJ. And I'm Les. And in today's episode, we're going to be discussing the trend of content creators moving their content to third-party services and uh, away from their own personal portfolios. Um, this is following on a bit of a trend of our last couple of episodes where it's all about uh, self-promotion, uh, portfolios, your CV, uh, looking for work. So we thought we'd discuss you know, personal portfolio sites as well and um, how people are sharing their content. I've uh, been noticing more and more that a lot of people are using third-party services for their for their blogs, uh, for hosting their design portfolios, for hosting their video content, their audio content. So, um, yeah, we thought we'd just uh, have a little chat about the different services and whether they're a good idea, whether they're a bad idea, and um, what's the what's the relevance of having a personal portfolio. Is, is the portfolio dead or does it need to evolve into something new or is it still relevant today? So what do you think, Les? Any opinions on that? Uh, yeah, I, I think it's a great topic to discuss because, uh, especially in this industry, um, showcasing or, or promoting yourself is key to to landing the ideal jobs um, in in the required fields. Or well, I suppose any industry really. Um, but at the same time, it's it's sort of um, a new age. No one's really hundred percent sure on how best to go about it. I mean. Uh, a portfolio site is pretty much or uh, conventionally seen as a jazzed up CV. Um, you've got your bit about me and here's a bit of my work and you know um, all that sort of stuff. And then migrating away to these uh, other mediums is uh, well, you, you're sort of in- enhancing that experience. You're like, look at my GitHub. You can see my code. You can see the how many um, commits I've done to open source projects or similar sort of work. Um, Imager, you've got a you know you can show off your if you're a photographer you can show off your, your different photos or you know you've got lots of different uh, mediums to do it on, um, but at the same time, it's are people losing sight of what the original uh, purpose of that uh, CV um, personal portfolio site was, and that was to to give a personal um, mark on who you are and what you do. I mean, I've never uh, I didn't have a personal site. Uh, for years and I still actually don't um I I relied uh, completely on my github uh to sort of do the the speaking but it was just code there was no personality to it that it you it wasn't telling a story um it was very bland um and so at the moment I'm currently developing uh my own company's brand and ethos into that um but it's made me realize that you can't just do one or the other um like you were saying earlier it the per uh personal portfolio site is isn't dead it it needs to evolve into using the correct mediums to showcase how awesome we are um while you know building up that personal brand i mean uh, what what sort of um what sort of systems uh, mediums do you use well i've i've got my own personal website as well um which has it's got some it's mainly written content on there um i don't do a hell of a lot of writing but i've trying to make a bit more of a conscious effort to do that this uh you know over the past six eight months i've been trying to do some more um in terms of my design portfolio i used to have it on my own personal site but i recently moved everything over to behance um the only real reason i moved it there was just because it was a lot easier to manage on there yeah you know they've already got the platform built you could just uh upload the images write some copy um, add your categories, add your sort of, uh, you can say what tools you use to do the design work. And then it's got that whole sort of uh, community aspect to it as well. So you're you're getting your designs in front of people who are interested in design. Yeah. Now, there's there's a plus side and a downside to both, uh, to, to doing that. There's obviously uh, two sides of the coin. Um, on the one hand, it's a great way for me to show my work to other designers. Um, but on the other hand is if somebody's coming to my personal website and they're wanting to know the overall picture of who I am and what I do, they're going to have to go to the third party services to cherry pick information from there as well. And there may be a lot of, you know, going off to another site, having a little look around, coming back, putting it in context and maybe then going, going off to another site to look at some other type of content. Like if I was going to share some photography for example i might put it onto Flickr or onto like 500px or on Unspl- splash or something like that 
Yep, yep. Whereas if all that content was in a central location on my own website, then you know you can create create a lot of cross links between that content. You can put it all in context. You can have everything showcased on one page on your homepage, so you can get an overall style. Like if you're yeah, if you do photography and you do graphic design, you you may have a similar style where maybe you're a very sort of geometric style, for example. So you could show your photography alongside your actual like graphic design work. And then if you're writing about that content as well, then you can show off your sort of literature style as well, all in one page. Yeah. Um, so that's where I think the benefit of having a your content on your own site is. But then I think the biggest reason for having it on third-party sites is the convenience of it. You know, the, the systems are already built. Um, you've, you, you know, your content is more discoverable because they've got these huge communities. There's there's no development work involved. All the heavy lifting is already done by the third party. You know, if you're trying to create a blog, for example, you need to first know how to create a blog. But there's also the the sort of management of things like categories and tags and the the social aspect of it. Whereas if you're posting your your written content onto Medium, for example, the format is there and everyone's used to that format. So yeah, I mean. I I I do post my I do post some of my written stuff on Medium as well, but it tends to go on my personal site first, and then I might cherry pick one or two things and post it to Medium as well. Yeah. Uh, but then link back to my own site, so create like a create a loop of content. So you sort of use it as like a a um, the actual portfolio bit, and then you're you're cherry picking the 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 bits you really want to showcase or get the attention, and sending it out to other mediums. Yeah, yeah, and in this case, it is actually to medium. Yeah, <laughs> um, but I mean, I think it's just a common trend now for a lot of companies and people to move their blogs over to medium. Um, there was a there was a tweet actually this morning by Paul Jarvis, who's a he's a he's a writer, he's a designer, he, he shares quite a lot of content. Um, but he sent a tweet this morning. Oh, let me just load it up, and uh, the question he asked was. Curious why so many tech folks have their main blog on Medium. Is it that hard to set up a blog on your own? So that was his question. He's had quite a few replies to it. Um, so I'll I'll put a link to it in the show notes. Yeah. But um, it had mixed opinions. Like a lot of people are saying that Medium's brilliant for your main blog because obviously you've you've got the audience and you've got all the, the actual the infrastructure is already there. Yeah. But then on the flip side, you've also you also sort of you're bound to their terms and conditions, you know, you're at the mercy of the platform and, you know, if they decide to change their, their business model and start charging for content or, you know, stick a paywall in front or even shut down, then that's your content gone, potentially. So. Well, yeah, definitely. I mean, there's also the added bit and it sort of links back into what I was previously saying about the, you lose your identity almost. Um, your Your post is not really seen as you, um, and th- this is purely from my own sort of perspective, but it's sort of linked to the the platform. So when I read a medium sort of post, um, I, I rarely, I, I, t- I do, you know, look at the author and that sort of stuff. But yeah, oh yeah, that was a medium post or you know, that sort of stuff. Um, you're, you're sort of, you lose a, a bit of the impact because then you, um, to your branding almost like gets associated with that uh, platform. Um, yeah, totally. Because it, it it feels like a news website now rather than a a person's blog. Yeah, yeah. You know, you you could you could you could spend an hour on Medium reading all these different posts, but you probably won't remember who any of them were by. Well, at the end, completely. of completely. I mean, um, I, I I can remember off the top of my head uh, a load of uh, articles by Scott Hanselman, uh, John Skeet from their own personal blogs, and I've read some absolutely brilliant ones from Medium, um, but I cannot tell you one of their one of the authors. Um, it's just lost to me. It's it was a medium post. Um, yeah, I, I suppose that's a double-edged sword, isn't it? it? It's there's so much content there that your content sort of gets uh, drowned out almost. Yeah, I think the type of content that you see on Medium as well is, it's 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 got a lot more of a marketing focus. Yeah. Um, I think because of the the sort of social aspect of it, where you can like and share the post, I think that influences the way people write content for Medium as well. Yeah, you know, like you'll often see companies, 
I read one today. Uh, once again, I, I don't remember who the company was. It was a, it was a, a, some software that was coming out, but the post was something to do with um, like the 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 pixel grids for design, like the grid systems, and they were basically the the post was saying how you know the current the current grid systems in design software is a little bit flawed because you if you ever need to resize your canvas the the columns and the margins and gutters and things don't really flex with that canvas yep so if you've already got some design work on your on your canvas which is pixel fitted to that grid and then you decide to change your canvas size you then have to go and repurpose all your content to fit that grid again and uh, then it then it slowly sort of faded into mentioning this other piece of software um, I'll dig out the link. I can't remember what it was called, and um, then it became a marketing post about this is our software and we can do all this. You know, once your once your content is on the grid, it stays on the grid no matter what you do with it. And then it was you know find out more here, blah blah blah. Follow our follow our blog. You know, look at our website, and it just turned into a marketing piece. Yeah, and it changed it changed the way I was reading the post. I I at at the beginning, I was quite interested. I thought, you know, maybe some individual has found a good solution to this problem, but it was a company that found a good solution and they were selling their solution. So at that point, I had switched off. I mentally switched off. Cause, well, you become more sceptical, don't you? Yeah, it's just like someone coming to your front door and, uh, you know, having a chat about something and then trying to sell you something. It was a, it was a, it was a sales pitch and th- it just put me off, that content, and I didn't get to the end of the article in the end. Because I just had no interest, and I, I I can't remember, I can't even remember the name of the software now. But if that had come f- from someone's personal portfolio, that's probably something I would have then gone on shared and also bookmarked and taken a lot more notice of, and maybe even tweeted them about it. Because I f- I would have felt more of a personal connection with that person and what they were saying. Well, that, yeah, that's what, sort of linking back to what I was saying about the the loss of identity or or personal brand. Um, it's gone it becomes a platform and all that sort of stuff but also as a, a sort of side effect when you're saying it sort of like devolves into um uh, different points marketing and that sort of stuff is um that it also it's very easy to become distracted on these mediums and clip find other content that um it, it's like the sort of uh the the uh, cat meme sort of distraction technique is you're reading an article that you know it might be technical it's relevant and then in one of the side columns or at the bottom or you know somewhere along there's a hey look at this um new gadget he gives me or someone's got a really opinionated thing that you don't agree with or agree with passionately and you're distracted and you click off it and you're gone um and you know as a someone that's trying to to build up mark well the reason why you would be blogging and stuff and bits like that is um as well as for self-improvement or or that sort of stuff is to market yourself and and to build up a following or a, a getting known in the community or you know if employers come along they they can respect you because of your opinions but if they're getting distracted and jumping onto five links down the road there they're off on youtube or something um you the purpose or of what you're trying to achieve is sort of lost you've got you've got to compete with everyone else on these um mediums um as much as anything uh, as anything else and yeah it's like google rankings or if that no one knows of your site no one's going to turn up but you know that everyone that's turning up is you've controlled that environment um and they're there to read the article that you've got and stuff and if they do jump off they're going to jump off to one of your other articles or something like that um it, it's a much more encapsulated environment um but then again a bigger audience it, it's the scattergun approach i suppose um a bigger audience you're you've you're up to your percentages so you might only get like two percent people staying on your post and recognizing you compared to ten percent if it was your own site but that two percent could be eight times what you would get on your personal site um mm. i i don't know it is it's a very um debatable thing and it's, it's a bit like marketing um or uh or good user experience and stuff it's like everyone has an opinion on what's a good user experience how a site should work what marketing strategies you should employ but until you actually try it out um you're never gonna know and you know no one i, I was uh on a uh webinar the other day and the the guy was telling a story about how he 
he been marketing for 10 years on the web um for since the like the early beginning days um he had this brilliant strategy it worked for all these other sites he used it on this one site and it was uh, a a buy one a free trial all that sort of stuff that you know normally wins and it completely flopped and what he found out in the end was the reason why it flopped was because the product that he was doing this free trial on was in the uh, impulse buy category range so it's about 20 to 30 dollars and um, he found that by offering a free trial, it actually turned people off because those people would be the impulse. Oh, that's only $30. I'll buy that instead of uh, I'll get a free trial and then I'll buy it or a sample or all that sort of stuff. Um, but that, I think that comes down to the, the, the personal sort of branding and marketing stuff is each person has your own personal identity, your own brand, what you're trying to sell, what, what, what you're trying to achieve. Um, it's always slightly different um, for each personal blog. And you've got to pick and choose your mediums very carefully um, to enhance that and further your, your goal and not just get lost in the sea of content. Yeah, I think different platform, platforms handle it. So, some handle it better than others. Um, like I don't, I don't think Medium is a good place to to build your personal brand uh, as much as other no. other platforms. So maybe it is right, but th- anyway, let me give my reasoning. See, with with Medium, when you're whether you're logged in or not, you're given content to read, whether whether you've asked for it or not. You're given like the top picks, the popular posts, you know, or just some random ones. And no matter what, no matter when, when you go on there, whether you're logged in, whether you're not, whether you're following people or not, you've got content to read. Now, that content, it, it could be relevant to you, but it's, it's, it's just like going to a news website. It's like going to, you know, BBC homepage. There's always going to be something to read there and it's going to eventually drop off the bottom and never be seen again. Unless, in in this case with Medium, is unless it gets enough traction and gets enough likes and and you know shares or whatever, which keeps it nearer to the top. Yeah. Now, another site I go on a lot is uh, Dribble, uh, for obviously design inspiration. Uh, people sharing off their showing off their. It's supposed to be their work in progress, but it's not really about that anymore. It's more, you know, how can I make my little. Uh, they call them shots. So my little dribble shock. How can I make it look as appealing as possible to, to obviously get that, um, you know, the community uh, approval as well. But the difference here, there is that when you're logged into the site, you only see the content from the people you follow. So if you want to find new content, you have to go and hunt for it. And then you, while you're hunting for that content, then you are going to get to know people's names, and. Uh, you are going to be seeing content from the same people again and again. So that's when you build up sort of, you might not necessarily build a relationship, but you build up a, um, a familiarity with people. And, yeah, you know, I tend to, to try not to follow too many people. I try and, you know, limit how many people I've followed just so I, I get to see content from similar people all the time. Um, you know, the type of content that I like. Yeah. But what it means is that or, or when you're not logged in, you do get to see like the, the popular popular um, posts on, on the platform, which is fine. Obviously, for someone who's coming to the site for the first time, uh, you need something to hook them in. But once you're logged in, I think the the concept of the site changes and the dynamics change a little bit. Yeah. Which is not what you get from, from Medium. You get it from... Even CodePen is like that as well, actually. Um, no matter whether you're logged in or not, you, you tend to see... You see the, the, the pens from the people that you follow, but you also see... Um, you know the top picks, um, but on the case of CodePen, I actually like that because I want to see what cool things people are producing on there, uh, rather than trying to go and hunt for it. So it depends on the platform. Sometimes I do like it, sometimes I don't. Well, CodePen is actually um, I have a bit of a love hate relationship with it. I, I've uh, I follow people on Twitter that that do a lot of um, pens and. I always jump onto their thing and go, oh my God, that's amazing, I love it. Start looking at how it's done. Um, but you always like get that temptation to start looking around and see what things are similar. And then all of a sudden you're, um, I think I went on to, to look at a, a pure um, CSS, uh, a snow sort of filter background um, that looked really cool um, over Christmas. And I, I ended up um, in menus and um, hamburger menus and all that sort of stuff land. And I was like, well, 
that that's like an hour of my time gone when I just wanted to see that one thing. <laughs> it's, yeah, and 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 you won't be able to remember who who created that first post that you're looking at. Well, funnily enough, I've I've tried to find it again a couple of times um, because I I have a, a an idea not for for snow but for d- dust particles um, and going into dot net land stuff. Um, but um, I've never been able to find it again, just to to get a vague concept of what they were doing and how they were sort of approaching it compared to me. Um, but never been able to find it, and I have no clue who it was. That's exactly my point. Um, you 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 just get distracted by all the content. Whereas if that was on someone's portfolio and they had showed off this piece on their portfolio, you'd more likely to remember who they were and probably bookmark their site. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the same as on on Unsplash. If you so you've been on Unsplash, I take it. I've I've never actually been on that one, no. Okay, so Unsplash dot com is basically where people can upload their photography and they make it uh, available for free for like public domain. Oh, cool. Um, so it's again, it's very sort of artistic shots. You know, people are taking photos to get likes. Yeah. That is, you know, that is the sole purpose of putting your photos on there, um, and. Um, if you follow them on Twitter, you'll you'll notice that they're constantly retweeting people who are bragging about how many likes they've had and how many downloads they've had on their photos, right? Which, to the person who's obviously those photos are for them, it's a, it's a it's it's quite a nice ego boost because yeah. obviously loads of people are, are viewing their photos and, and downloading their photos. For, um, but of all those people, of all those thousands, maybe even millions of people who have downloaded those photos. I could probably imagine that zero of them actually know who took that photo and they would never be able to find more work by that person. Well, you've you've not like... Um, I, I suppose this is actually quite... We could link it to uh, personal designers, um, personal designers, um, interior designers. Um, I've, I've been working with uh, a couple of um, uh, clients to, that manage multiple uh, interior designer sites. And... Um, that that's purely um, all of their stuff is very much hoarded onto their site, their personal sites, their domain. It's got their own brand, their feel, all that sort of stuff, and they will not let an image of of their one of their bathrooms or anything else go onto another site because maybe it's the same sort of thing. It's like once it's on other places, or if it was too spread, too free, that sort of stuff. No one links it back to them. No one's going to look at their next work or or all that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so maybe it's a, a similar sort of concept which that that uh, industry has taken a little bit more uh, extreme. Yeah, it's like people are not creating because they're that's what they that's that's their style of creating. They're creating for the almost the celebrity status. Yeah. To to gain likes and you know chasing that glory almost. Well, it's almost like a um a false economy though because like you're saying, no one actually knows who they are. So. Multiple people have downloaded the the image. Like, oh yeah, my my photo was brilliant. Um, but you know, people might have just downloaded it and then not used it, or you, there's no actually real metrics or or feel good. You know, everyone might have liked it, but they might have been passing. Like, oh yeah, like that, like that, like that. Um, exactly. Yeah, you're just scrolling through the site, hitting like, 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 like to create some sort of collection for your personal collection. Like, like I've got a uh, collection of. Um, on 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 splash i've got a collection of dark photos and the reason i've got those so i'm hitting like on, on and adding all these different photos to my collection um but the purpose for me doing that is not to give appreciation to the to the photographer it's 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 purely selfish because i've i run an app on my mac called uh, ir view or ear view i don't know how it's supposed to be pronounced and um, what it does is it it queries the the unsplash api um queries my applicate uh, my um my collection that i've created and it changes my desktop background every every couple of hours so i've got this theme of dark wallpapers that i've got now oh cool so although i'm hitting like and and adding these photos to my collection i'm i'm doing it purely for myself i'm doing it for selfish reasons i'm not doing it to you know give them any praise or yeah. I don't I don't know who any of the photographers are, but you know, on on their end, from their point of view, it's an extra like on their side, and it's an extra an extra stat on their on their page, isn't it? 
Yeah, well, I suppose that that, that comes into uh, not necessarily the dark side of um, portfolio sites and the, these mediums, but it it's sort of the uh, self-centered uh, ego boost, like you were saying earlier. Um, people do this to get recognition um, from the community and not necessarily care how it's done. It, it's more of a, you know, I'm going to tailor my content, I'm going to tailor my code, I'm going to you know, do everything I can to get as many likes as I can instead of just, you know, being the best I can be and showing off what I can do. Yeah. So do you actually follow any personal blogs, any any particular people? Um, yeah, so I, I sort of uh, follow John Ski. Uh, I've mentioned him a couple of times now, uh, but anyone in .NET land um, well, knows him. Um, uh, there's uh, Scott Hanselman, um, an, another great guy. Uh, there's a a uh, awesomely intelligent Indian fellow. I uh, can never remember his name. Um, I'm, I'm going to blame my dyslexia on that one because I can't can't pronounce it. Um, but I, I I follow him quite religiously and even have done a, a few buy me buy me a beer um, clicks for his site. Um, and there's I, I follow a few front end people. Um, I've I've not really can't really remember their their name specifically. Um, uh david uh, welsh was was one um unfortunately i uh i suppose it, it, it's only fair to talk about uh people that you've sort of unfollowed um but i sort of uh i lost interest um in some of his tweets and that sort of drove me away from his blog um mm. which it, it's actually it's quite a good um uh, point to make is um sometimes the you can uh have too many mediums or not be uh if you say like uh, Twitter, if you put um, stuff on Twitter that is maybe not uh, rel uh, relational to your your blog's content or what people are interested in, um, you might actually get people to start s to switch off from your blog. And that that's not targeted at him, um, but uh, as a general sort of rule, um, there's a, a fair few blogs that I've uh, got interested in the content, uh, signed up, uh, subscribed to the newsletter and stuff. Um, simple programmer being one and then their their marketing their their tweeting or something like that um just you you it becomes drivel and you're like yeah I, i've switched off and um like you were saying earlier um i'm quite selective on on who i follow and the the content i i take in i'm very open to uh, getting new ones um but when i decide that it, i'm not getting any value from it, it they very rapidly fall off the i fall off the following list mm. um, yeah i think it's, i think it's important that if you are going to have a personal personal blog then uh, you do need to, you know, if, and you've got a particular writing style or you've got a particular topic that you do focus on, um, you know, in our cases it's going to be sort of design and development, um, then I think it is quite important to make sure you have enough of that style come through on your other networks as well. So, yeah, on your yeah. Twitter, Twitter feed, your Twitter feed should kind of reflect what your what your person, personal, you know, blog is trying to sell as well. Um, obviously, it doesn't have to constantly be like a you know a like for like um copy but well if anything if it was like for like that would be negative um each medium has their own um uh, pros and cons um and and you want to you know maximize your uh your attractiveness in each one um but without uh well, min minimizing the the loss of your your whole your brand your identity um and no, I, I think your, your statement's completely correct. You, you just got to be quite careful um, to maintain it. Yeah, I follow quite. I follow a few people's personal, like uh, the content from their actual personal website. Um, there's a guy called Matt Smith. Uh, he's MDS on Twitter. Um, so I follow him. He doesn't post very often on his website. Uh, he's quite. He's very active on Twitter, but. The, the stuff that comes from his website is generally stuff that he hasn't posted anywhere else, I've noticed. Um, Tobias van Schneider, he's a, he's a designer. And um, he has, he doesn't really, I don't follow his actual website much, but he has a personal email list, which I'm subscribed to. So he sends an email out, I think it's every Sunday. And um, he generally writes a piece of ex like content specifically for that email. And then share some links to some some of his tweets, but you know, like these sorts of people, like they're just two that come to mind. They they have a very similar style of content on their on their personal on their blogs, 
uh, or you know the bit that you subscribe to and also on their Twitter feed but then the Twitter feed is also uh, a lot more it has their personality really comes through on those as well where they you know they talk talk about current affairs and they're a bit more jovial or, you know they they have a rant every now and then but you know it, it's just part of the personality you get the overall picture um yeah and the other, only other real um actual f- site that i subscribe to is uh is actually a friend of mine uh a chap called tom hewlin he's a he's like a sports uh he well he's he's a journalist he mainly used to write for sports but now he he just started his own blog it's called the friday dress down and uh he just basically does a commentary on on what's ha- been happening that week uh, it's quite funny so I'll, I'll put a link into into the show notes for that um i think you'll quite like that actually it's, it's quite a quite a funny sort of take on what's been happening politically in the week yeah yeah definitely add, add that link in and I'd, I'd be definitely interested in uh, having a listen yeah yeah um he was actually saying that he'd like to be a guest on the podcast one day um i'm actually meeting up meeting up with him next week uh for a beer at some point and uh we'll probably take you know discuss that a bit further but yeah his blog's quite funny yeah cool I mean, you, you've got someone that we were sort of mentioning earlier, um, and it's actually someone that I follow as well, is um, Harry Roberts. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, again, like Harry Roberts, I don't really follow his site. I do I do go to his site now and then, but normally when something's led me there, so if he shares something on Twitter, then it'll lead me to his site, and then I might have a click around at, at a few other things. But, you know, I think he's one of those names that it's just it's already in my head, so I, I know that. That's going to be a good reference. Whenever any time I go to his site, it's going to be a good reference, and I know what I'm going to get from his site as well. Have you subscribed to his new um, mailing list? Uh, no, not a mailing list. I just follow him on Twitter. Oh, well, he's got a quite a good. Um, it's actually quite sporadic. I suppose he, well, he's a really busy bloke, um, but it's got some awesome content. Uh, also, a little bit at the end about mixers for for good drinks. Um, but it it's sort of like content that's not really on his site or not really anywhere else. Um, it's it's a good newsletter. It's actually one of the the best informative newsletters that um, I, I get in the mail. And uh, so far, it I haven't uns- unsubscribed, and that's normally uh, after one or two. So mm. it's going well. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've got a page on my website of uh, people who I've found quite in- influential and people who I'd like to meet, and he's he's on that list. Yeah. So Harry, if you're listening, I want to get a beer with you one day and uh, pick your brains. <laughs> yeah. So you never know. You might listen to this. If not, we'll just have to send him emails. Bug him yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll point him to this part of the part of the show. All right. Cool. Well. Uh, okay. Good stuff. Um, so everyone listening, if you enjoyed the show, uh, please do hit subscribe wherever you're listening to this, and you can follow us on Twitter at Inspect FM. And if you have any feedback for the show, you can get in touch via our website at Inspect.fm. And uh, we will catch you in the next episode. See you next time. All right, mate. Have a good week. You too. Bye. Have you done anything notable this week? Any personal projects or uh, anything in the news or stuff you want to talk about? Because it would be boring if we just uh, geeked out for... For too long. Uh, well, it's it's still kind of geeky stuff, but I've just been working on the actual the inspect website this week. Uh, just doing some little tweaks to it, you know, sorting out things like meta tags and um, some of the open graph stuff that helps when you're sharing links on on uh, social sites. Um, I've been sort of trying to get some of the um, what's the word analytics for subscribers. Cool. Trying to get all that set up, so I'm just doing some of the ad mini sort of stuff of the of the actual podcast. Nice, nice. So yeah, I've been focusing on that this week. Um, no, I haven't haven't been working on anything else really, any sort of side projects or anything. Yeah, uh, you you been up to anything exciting? Um, I, I well, apart from uh, working hard, I I got a interested in. Um, I was working on a a client site that has multi step authentication. Um, and uh, in the end, I, I've ended up building my own um, multi-step uh, uh, authentication uh, SMS uh, login um, as a prototype to try and see how it how it works. And um, <laughs> but apart from that, it's uh, no, I've been quite boring this week. Have you seen any movies lately? Um, only film I've watched is uh, was Ben Hur, the new Ben Hur, um, last night actually. 
It was a, uh, it was, it was good fun. Um, I, I watched the old one back when I was a kid, and um, I really enjoyed it. So when the new one came out initially, um, y- you know, it's like the the old classics are great, and you don't really want to spoil them. Um, so I avoided it and uh, had nothing else to watch last night. So so whacked it on, and uh, it was definitely a good watch. How about you? Um, I went to see the new Beauty and the Beast. Any good? Uh, yeah, it was okay. I mean. I went with my wife and my daughter. They both obviously loved it. Uh, my wife's a huge sort of fan of the original. Um, but I don't know. I was. It was. It was good, but it wasn't as good as I was hoping. It wasn't blockbuster. No, it's, I wouldn't say it wasn't. It was like the 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 original film. It was quite. It was so iconic, and especially the the ballroom scene. You know, it was such an iconic scene in that film, uh, in the original. But in this movie, they almost didn't make enough of a of a big deal about that scene. And I think it they could have made it a lot bigger and given it a, a what's the word? Yeah, just made it feel a bit more like magical sort of Disney, what you'd expect from a magical sort of Disney film. Uh, Play a bit more uh, homage to the uh, original. Yeah, yeah, maybe that. Um, but it was overall it was good, but it's not the sort of thing I'll be sort of rushing to watch again. Yeah, to be honest. I mean. Yeah. The the film that I'm most interested in watching, it's only because I've been a, a die hard fan of the uh the franchise, um, since a young and uh, is the I can't even think of the uh the name of it. Um I've been trying not to follow it because uh I d I don't want to get to um my hopes up to it. You mean alien? Yeah, you know exactly what's going on. Well one. yeah, well of course. Yeah. I think everyone's everyone's just itching for that one to come out now. Um especially after Prometheus. I mean Prometheus was a bit of a letdown. It was it was an okay film, but it just didn't really answer any questions, um, and it was quite confusing actually. Yeah, it, it added a lot more questions. It added a lot more questions, and it sort of um, uh, some of the the common uh, topics or trends or, or theories behind it, um, or behind the original Aliens. It, it sort of completely it it played on them, and then it completely changed it. Um, I, I, I don't know if you've ever read it. I've only briefly read them. Uh, some of the, the comics uh, that came out um, and stuff and were meant to be the, the true law. Um, no, I haven't read the comics. I mean, I've seen all the films. Um, I've watched them all sort of in, in, in order quite recently as well. Uh, so I watched all the alien movies and then the Predators and then the av- uh, the Alien vs. Predator and then I saw Prometheus just again a couple of weeks ago just to get a refresher before the new one comes out. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, I loved all the original Alien movies but Prometheus, Prometheus for me just, I don't know, it just didn't really, it just didn't leave me wanting to watch it again. I, I was just, I was happy when it was finished to be honest. I was just like, that was a boring film. It just... It was confusing. It didn't really answer any questions. But hopefully, this new one will fill in the gaps. But I've heard that this, I've heard a rumor that Promet- the new one that's coming out, Alien Covenant, is obviously going to be set after Prometheus. Yeah. But then there's another one coming out, which is p- possibly called Alien Awakening, which is then going to be a prequel to Covenant. But so in between Prometheus and Covenant, so they're being released. There's two more films coming out, and they're both being released in the wrong order. Sounds very alienish. <laughs> Which is like, yeah. So it's just it's like frustrating. The, all these prequels and sequels, and then prequels, two prequels. You just can't keep up. Like even Rogue One. Like I, I haven't seen Rogue One, right? So no spoilers here. But I was under the impression that Rogue One was came after um, whatever the one before that was, the uh, Episode Seven. I don't know. What the most called. recent one? Yeah, Rogue One is the most recent one, right? And I I never watched episode seven. I can't I can't remember. I don't, I'm gonna cut this bit out. <laughs> forget it. I don't know enough about it. So well, no, I'm I'm trying to think. It is because I don't think I've seen Rogue One, but I saw Rogue One. Rogue One is the prequel to A New Hope. It's 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 basically like Star Wars three and a half. No, I haven't seen it. Yeah, but I haven't seen it either. Maybe we should watch that. Maybe I'll do that this week. Yeah. I'll catch up on Star Wars, and then we can talk about that next yeah. week. We could say, uh, you, uh, as it, we just, uh, this got cut from last week's, but this week... No, I'll leave it in. Yeah. I'm probably going to piss loads of Star Wars fans off by having my lack of knowledge of Star Wars, but yeah. Uh, it's Maybe it's all good fun. I'll, I'll try and catch up, and then we'll talk about it next week. Yeah, okay. I just saw a trailer. I saw this trailer. Uh, someone released like a 
they'd cut the end of Rogue One and then splice it into the beginning of New Hope and shown the continuation of the two movies. Um, so I've seen that. So I kind of got a spoiler of the end of Rogue One already. But, oh well. <laughs> Never mind. I, I can't even remember the, the you, you're uh, listing the names. I can't even remember what happened in each name. I, I, I remember the films, just not the labels. It's all merged into one. Yeah, all right. <laughs> we should uh, we should have a, a movie night yeah. and well, a movie day and watch all of them. Yeah, especially before we start making it, having opinions on it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Anyone who's listening, just ignore everything we just said about Star Wars because we know nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs>